morning. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the associate pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and I am so glad that you have tuned in with us today. Our lead pastor, Reverend Meredith Brown, also welcomes you. She is away this week on a much needed rest, a time of rest and relaxation, so we remember her in our prayers. We also want to extend the welcome from our ministry staff, our AV staff, our music staff, and our office staff. We are all glad that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue today. I want to remind you to please fill out your contact form on the Facebook live feed. If you could go there and fill that out, also include ways that we can connect you. Please include if you have any prayer requests. Those prayer requests go to the pastors and office staff, and we would love to continue to pray with you in your needs. Again, I just want to say welcome. It is so good to be here with you this morning. Um, I hope that this worship service blesses you in, in all sorts of ways. Next, we usually pass the peace at Douglas Avenue, and that will be done today by our youth group. Let's get started. Hi, we're the Douglas Avenue Youth Group. I'm Mari Philbrick, peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Marilla Friends. Peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Tyler. And peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Karis Brown. Peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Joy Brown. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Curtis Brown. Peace be with you all. I'm Rebecca Johnson and I'm Joe Johnson and we're members here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We invite you to have your Advent wreath candle ready and join us in lighting the first candle. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. During the season of Advent we get ready. 
We get ready for the celebration of Jesus' birth at Christmas. And we get ready for Jesus to come again into our world to make all things new. If ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. It has been a difficult year with lives turned upside down. Family, friends, and neighbors are sick and dying with COVID-19. Folks are anxious and they are struggling. The ways we care for one another are strained. We need Jesus and we need Advent hope. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that the nations might tremble at your presence. So break through these difficult times, O Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. And we light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Please light your candle too. Let this light be a guide to help us see Jesus, our hope for the world. Please pray with me. O oh God of hope, we know there is much wrong in our world. We know how far it is from what you intended and how far we often stray from your way. Come to us again, rekindle our hope, be born among us, that all the world may be made new. Amen. Good morning, I'm Marcia Stout, keyboard player for the Douglas Avenue Praise Band. Please stand and join us in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. small talk. So all the kids out there, come on up to your TVs or laptops or iPads or phones, whatever you're watching from, and get ready for small talk. I am Miss Lori, the Director of Children and Youth at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and this is my assistant, Laud the Lamb, and his assistant, Cohen. And today is so exciting, Laud. It is the, it's the first Sunday of Advent. So the Christmas season, we are in full swing now, right, Laud? Now, Laud was really excited yesterday because we baked some cookies. We baked some um, sugar cookies. And Laud's having a hard time because he's waited and waited and waited to bake these cookies, and we finally baked the cookies. And I've told him he has to wait some more to ice them. His favorite part is the sprinkles. So what I've told him is, Laud, if you try to put sprinkles and they're not iced, yeah, they, they just don't stick, right? See, they don't stick. So we have to ice them, and we will sometime today. But he's a sheep, and he has a hard time waiting. He wants them iced, and he wants to use his sprinkles on the cookies. And I've told him again today, 
he has to wait. Which kind of reminds me of Christmas and of Advent. We wait all year for Christmas and to start our Advent, I'm gonna move this over here, move those cookies over, don't panic, Lud, and your sprinkles, and move this over. So it's our first Sunday of Advent. Now, in a little while, we'll light our Advent wreath. And we get to, well, and I realize, it's not a wreath this year. We did something with rocks. And if you still need a kit, just let us know and we'll get you all the supplies. But it reminds us of having to wait and waiting for the birth of Jesus. And for Laud, and for some of us, it's a little bit like waiting for iced sugar cookies, right? But I have promised him today, we will ice the sugar cookies. Just remember, waiting's hard, but it is so worth it. Love and miss you guys. Bye-bye. Hi, I am sitting in the entryway of my home. Um, to my left is a nativity set that's been in my family for years and years. I would love to tell you more about this nativity set and you can hear more about that is I want to hear about your nativity sets, about your favorite ornaments, about some sort of tradition in your home. So if this is something that excites you and will help you get into the Advent mood, I encourage you to Zoom with us at four o'clock. Pastor Meredith is going to come out of vacation um, to join in. This was her idea and she wants to see some of your um, favorite things as we get into the mood of Advent and just a time of connection and sharing. If you haven't already, you can get a link to the Zoom by um, messaging Mark he, at his email address and that is in the e-news. Or if that doesn't work, you can certainly call me and I will talk you through how to get a Zoom link. So again, I hope that you will join myself and Pastor Meredith and anyone that wants to get together and talk about something special um, that brings meaning to your Christmas. Thank you. My name is Charlie Jessup and I'm a college student at SIUE and a member here at Douglas Avenue. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Today's scripture is from Luke chapter 1 verse 5 through 25. In the time of King Herod of Judea there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. 
Both were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, she was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all of the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to them, standing at the right side of the altar incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For all, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents of, to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day comes, because you, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. Then they realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant for five months and remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away disgrace among the people. May God bless our hearing and understanding of this scripture reading. Again, I welcome you to the first Sunday of Advent. It is a joy and an honor to bring to you the Word of God. For those that you that know the rhythm of the church calendar, you know that Advent is this time of waiting, this pause, preparing our hearts to remember about the birth of Christ and what that birth means to us and what it means to the world. Often the scriptures that we read on the first Sunday of Advent are a little bit dim. It's the people of God calling out or waiting for a light. They're in a dark place and they're looking for the Messiah, the chosen one, Jesus Christ. This all seems pretty easy this year in the midst of a pandemic. With all the political and racial unrest, we're needing a reminder what this birth means to all of us. Today, we will find hope in the story of Elizabeth and Zachariah. They are the backstory, the memory, of the really good story of the birth of Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Oh God, we are so grateful to be people of God. We are so grateful to be moving into the Advent season as we try to slow down, as we try to remember just exactly what the birth of Christ means to each of us. Be with me, oh God, as I deliver these words that I have prepared and that you have helped me with. You are, God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. As I begin this sermon, I want to show you some photographs. The first one, many of you might know this picture, but it is not simply a sweet black girl walking down the steps with some white men in suits. This is Ruby Bridges, a six-year-old. She was the first African-American child to integrate into a white elementary school in 1960. For safety, she was escorted to class by her mother and the United States Marshals. Knowing the backstory, or hearing about the backstory, reading about it, what all went on to get to this point for black people, and knowing now the challenges that they continue to face, makes this picture more meaningful. Knowing the whole story and remembering it changes us. The next photo I'd like to show you, this looks like some maybe upper class wealthy women, maybe at a bridge club in the 1960s or 1970s. And at first I thought that probably the one lady probably trumped the other lady in bridge and they were having a great time. But that's so much more than that. These women are the wives of the first men to walk on the moon. 
This was the moment that they were told that their husbands landed on the moon. This changed so much about their lives and the United States relations with the world and the scientific future, how they got there and what that meant for the future. Knowing the whole story and remembering it changes us. The next picture. When I first saw this picture, I knew it had to be a reunion of sorts, such joy. It was, but not just any reunion. It is a United States Vietnam veteran who was a prisoner of war for five years. His family never thought they would see him again. This time frame was such a turning point for the United States. What this man must have gone through and how that changed him and our country. Knowing the real story and remembering it changes us. The next photograph, some of you might have seen it before, but it's a picture of President Bush reading to school children. This photo was taken just seconds before President Bush was told of the 9-11 attacks in New York City. Minutes after that, our world changed forever. Knowing the whole story and remembering it changes us. The next photo looks like a mom and a child looking at something on a phone. Could it be a picture, a cartoon? No. This picture was taken recently. It is a woman talking to her husband and that who also happens to be the baby's dad who was in the hospital with COVID, but they couldn't visit with him. They just had to see him on a screen and pray that he comes home. Knowing the whole story, and many of us have heard more and more about that whole story in these last months. Knowing the whole story changes us. The next picture, we all know this picture, the manger scene and the birth of Christ. We often don't hear the whole story of Jesus' birth. We hear this part about the manger and the census, the donkey, the star, the stable, and I love that story. But we tend to skip right over Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 25 that Charlie read to us. But hearing the whole story I'm going to tell you today, hearing about Zechariah and Elizabeth and how God sent them first for a reason and remembering that can change us. It starts like this. In the time of King Herod in Judea, the author, Luke, reminds us right from the start that this was the time of King Herod. As Amy Jill Levine states in her book, any story that is set in the time of King Herod is a story about threat to life. It means evil and hopelessness. King Herod is even known for killing two of his sons and a wife. This context is important to get the whole picture. These people needed the promised Messiah to come. This country was ruled by this mean and evil man, a person and a system that was so corrupt and self-serving. Next, Zachariah and Elizabeth enter the story. Luke tells us of their backstory, and it was important. They were not just living under King Herod, but even in the midst of that, they were faithful Jewish people known for their personal holiness. Elizabeth was the daughter of a line of priests and served God. Zechariah was one of the most well-respected priests in all of Israel, and he came from the priestly division of Abijah, who was also a descendant of Aaron, who was a descendant of Moses. Get it? So they came way, way back. They're connecting that Old Testament back to our time of Jesus Christ. Luke knew their past history, and Luke knew that it mattered. Zechariah and Elizabeth were to be parents of John the Baptist, the one that is coming to prepare a place for Jesus. We often hear that part of the story. The one that is coming to save us in our darkness. This was such hope for the people. You see, the faithful and strong leaders of the past are now becoming part of this story. There's a connection. As the story continues, we learn that Elizabeth and Zechariah were so well suited for God's work. They were holy people, but they were aging and they never had a child. When we know that part of the story, it also gives it more emotion, the whole picture. We know that when you read the Bible and it mentions righteous couples having fertility problems, that a conception or a child is not far behind. It was true for Sarah and Rebecca and Rachel and Hannah. The past is part of the present, 
and Luke wanted us to know that and understand that. So why is it important for us to, this, to the story and the picture that we all have in our minds of Jesus' birth? You see, when we look back and remember stories like Sarah and Abraham, who also could bear no children, who also were visited by an angel. Remember that story, it's coming back. They gave birth to a child named Isaac. There was a connection to the past, to our memory. And if we know our backstory, we know that God gave a covenant to Abraham. Remember that? God gave a covenant to Abraham that he would be with his people always, that God's people would be a blessing and be blessed. There is this undeniable connection in memory to the past. Luke takes us to the past. The world of early Jewish history, the history of Israel, is also a part of our history. That makes the point stronger. The name Zechariah, listen to this, I think it's amazing. In Hebrew is Zachar, which means God remembers. And the name Elizabeth means my God, Eli, and the second part comes from the Hebrew word Sheva, when together means God keeps God's promises. So together, they remind us that through history, through all the way from Abraham, God keeps God's promises, that God will keep his promise, that God is with us now, God is with us always, God is with us in COVID, God will be with us through all of 2020 and beyond. Following the story, Zechariah was duty-bound to go to the temple once a year and tend to the needs of the people that were coming there to worship. This year, he got selected to go in. He got to enter the holy of holy places. And while he was there, the angel Gabriel appeared to him. At first, like anyone would be, he was scared and terrified. But the angel said, your prayer has been answered. Can you imagine what Zechariah was feeling? Because he prayed a lot. So what prayer was the angel talking about? Which prayer was he referring to? Almost as if reading the priest frightened mind, Gabriel continues. Gabriel said, you will have a son. His name will be John. He will be the fruit of the Holy Spirit and he will go before the Lord and make a way. He will make a way for the Savior to come, Jesus Christ. How will I know it's so? Zechariah asked. He couldn't believe it. Gabriel, the angel, must have been upset at his initial disbelief and silenced Zechariah. Ze Zechariah lost his ability to speak. How will I know this so? Was so? He couldn't believe it. Zechariah gets silenced. But why is this any importance to us? Why is this important? Why are we talking about Zechariah, the soon father of John the Baptist, instead of focusing on Mary and Joseph? First, it is so important that before Jesus was born, God knew that this was such a big deal, that, Je that Jesus needed a forerunner, someone from good Jewish people that we could connect that blessing from long ago, someone that can connect us to Jesus and God's covenant with God's people, over 4,000 years ago and make a way so we would be ready. The birth of Jesus, God coming as flesh, was something that was earth shattering at that time. Remember, it was a dark, evil time. It required a prelude. So John the Baptist was to be born, connecting us to the past to get us ready for the birth of Jesus Christ. Memory of a good past where God delivered and God gave a covenant to all people. We now have a connection to that. As the story continued, and just as the angel promised, Elizabeth gives birth to her baby, a son. Families and neighbors, they were overjoyed. Zechariah remembered what the angel said, and he asked for a tablet, and he wrote. Instead of naming this child Zechariah, which was tradition, he followed the angel, and he said, his name is John. Then Zechariah received his voice back. John the Baptist was born to prepare a way for the people. John the Baptist came from a line of Jewish people who knew God and were saved by God. The conception and birth of John the Baptist is a reminder of the past. It's another story that Jesus Christ will fulfill God's promise that God made to us so long ago. Knowing the whole story and remembering it changes us. All of this happened 
all of this history to get us ready for this time to remember the birth of Christ. It was to get them ready for the birth of Christ, to get the people who lived then ready for Jesus the Savior, and to get us ready now. For me, knowing the backstory, understanding how the Old Testament stories relate to the New Testament makes the story of Jesus' birth more believable and more meaningful. When I see a picture of the manger scene, it gives me more hope because I know some of the past and I know the promise that God gave that came before. I know that people then needed hope and Jesus was that hope. We need hope now and Jesus Christ is still that hope. So we could stop there, but let's take this one step forward. If we looked at some photos, we started looking at photos. If we looked at photos now, what would be obvious? If people saw pictures of you or our church of 2020, maybe they're looking at these pictures 50 years from now, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, or 1,000 years from now, what would they see in us? History will mark this year, there is no doubt. The year 2020 will be in future history books. They will know our backstory. Children 50 years, 100 years from now, they're gonna read about 2020, about the pandemic, about the election, about race riots, about forest fires. They're gonna hear all this and they're gonna see how we as people responded and where we found our hope. What if they see a photo that shows somehow that you were changed because of 2020. You were changed because you knew the promise of Jesus Christ and you kept that close to you and you listened and you were in tuned and you did not forget what the birth of Christ meant and what Jesus Christ taught us in his life. What if photos of 2020 changed us and it was revealed to us in a new way and it was well documented how we were changed as people in the midst of this darkness, that we all learned that our most precious, precious possession is not things, but it's our loved ones. That our most valuable resource is not money, but it's time, especially time that we spend with those we love. What if we learned that we can do with less so others could have more, and we saw the need of more equality among our economics? What if the world, we were able to see in a brighter way that the world is connected, that we're all connected, and that we need each other? What if we saw in a new way that skin color and sexuality didn't matter, but it does matter what white straight people do with their privilege? What if we make personal sacrifices and we learn the importance of that so we can benefit the weak and the most vulnerable? What if we learn that everyone needs and deserves work, but value and support healthcare workers, teachers, and minimum wage essential workers more fairly? What if we realized that we live in this beautiful, beautiful world that God gave us but we must protect it. Then 2020 has great hope if we learn some of that, if we could put some of that in photographs for people to look back on. Advent has come at a great time, a time to be somewhat like Zechariah, to be silent, to do less talking and more thinking and more praying and to spend quiet time with God or to be in service for God. A time to ask ourselves, how are we coming into this Advent season so we, the people of the future, see our pictures? Well, they will know that we were people of God, that we learned things from 2020 and we changed our hearts and our lives and it's reflected in those photos. A God whose backstory always stays with us. So the next time you see a picture of a nativity scene, I hope that you're able to look back, that you're able to think of the story from the Old Testament, to think of that promise that God gave us, that God will always be with us, 
and that 2020 is a time truly of great hope and great change. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hi, we're the Philbrick family. Please join us in singing Emmanuel. Good morning, everybody. Would you please now open your hearts and open your minds and join me in the prayers of the people. And Margaret Ann, for the record, I do have my shoes off, for this is holy ground. Will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we just give you such thanks for this time and this opportunity to come together. We lift up our church, we lift up our pastors, and we lift up our leaders. We lift up the ability for online services, for musics, for gifts, for talents that are shared. We give you thanks for the big groups that gather, and we give you thanks, Lord, for the small groups that gather to discuss your word, to discuss your life, and do our best to carry that on ourselves. For the health concern, Lord, we pray for all of those that are going through COVID. We pray for the fear to subside, Lord. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and the caregivers and the facilities, for the testers and for those who are working such long hours to provide what needs to be provided, for those that are lonely and in the hospital by themselves, for those that are struggling emotionally, physically. Give us the ability, Lord, to see your holy in each one of those situations and those circumstances in our every day. Be with the new babies that are coming into this world and be with those that do require some special handling and again the facilities and the, the caregivers that will look over them. Lord we remember fondly all of our friends and our families, those that we cannot gather with or could not gather with this past holiday Thanksgiving. I pray for those Lord that are lonely, finding themselves in a state of despair. Pray for the sick and for the ailing. And despite our challenges of not being able to gather together, Lord, we pray for those that are grieving and mourning for healing and the connections that we need to work so diligently and so hard to keep making. We pray for the homeless, the least, and the lost, for the recovery from affliction and abuse. We pray leaning not on our own understanding, Lord, but yours, Lord Jesus. We pray for the right people in the right places and for your timing, for your call. Please, Lord, let us hear that call. Let us use these gifts that you have blessed us with to help serve and to help put our hands where we can. For the needs of those, Lord, that feel just overwhelmed right now, may we work in unison with you to help meet those needs, sharing our spiritual nourishment, Lord, to encourage, to enlighten, to lift others above ourselves those that are feeling trapped and abandoned 
in hardships and struggle, abusive relationships. Give them the power to persevere, Lord, that builds the character, Lord, and that leads to hope and that leads to you. We lift our community, we lift our congregation, we lift our state and our worldly affairs. And instead of feeding into the masses of the negativity, Lord, let us encourage, emphasize, and explore the direction that your word, your life, and your example provides. We pray again for the leaders, for our authorities, for the military men and women, for their families and for their support, for the mental anguish that comes as a result of war, for thoughts of suicide. Let your light in this world outshine the temptations of evil. And as in our scripture today, Lord, let us not fear or be afraid of what your angels have to show and share with us. Make ready a people and prepare us for you, O Lord. Show us favor and remove our disgrace. As we assemble in your name, please be with Margaret Ann today as she delivers the sermon for us. Let it nourish our spiritual souls and our bodies. Let us take what she has to share from you, Lord, and pass it out amongst this world in any way, in any format or forum that we possibly can. We pray for your presence and for your spirit. And may we do our part to equip this world and prepare this world for your coming. Now, please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom and your power and your glory forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty, unmatchable name, amen. It is now time in our worship service where we spend some time thanking God, showing our generosity to all the good things that God has given us. As a church, we do many, many ministries, and of course those ministries and ministry staff take resources. So we do invite you, as possible and as you can be generous, to continue to give to Douglas Avenue. You can do that through your contact form, you can set up online banking by calling the church, and you can simply mail in a check. I just want to say that all of the money that is received at Douglas put, gets put to such good use, and we are so grateful. But mostly we want you to feel the blessings that it is when you can give back, when you can give back to the things that are important to you. So we ask you to continue to show your generosity in many ways, through your giving, through your prayers, and through your service. Thank you. Hi, I'm Janet Schmidt, the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please stand and join me in the final hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. concludes our worship service for today. 
as you continue to go into your week and into this Advent season. I encourage you to slow down in pause, to spend time with God as we continue to prepare our hearts and our lives for remembering the coming of Christ. As you leave this place, I ask you to go and fall more in love with God and love your neighbor. Amen.